Hello students, a very warm welcome to the class once again. We have learned about the basic mathematics portion in this chapter. Now we'll start with the vectors. You all know in physics there are physical quantities like force, momentum, electric current and so on. There are many physical quantities. Now some of these physical quantities have only magnitude. Some have both magnitude and direction and some they are in a very different way that we'll see those are very different uh, compared to the having only magnitude or only direction. So the physical quantity can be described or can be classified into three subheadings. Those are scalars or vectors or tensors. So let's start with physical quantities. And as I told you, it can be classified into three categories. Those are scalars, vectors or tensors scalars vectors or tensors now tensors actually these are totally different uh, in their origin we'll talk about more about this prior to that let's understand about scalars and vectors now see suppose i say you how much distance have you traveled from your home to school now let's say there are three paths to move from your home to school and all the three paths have different distance you have to traverse along the three paths. So distance is actually measure of the path length. So it will be having different different magnitude while moving from the same initial point to the same final point. So distance will say it has only magnitude but no direction. And so such a quantity which has only magnitude and no direction, such a quantity is known as a scalar. So scalar quantities have only magnitude. They have only magnitude. Example. Just now I told you distance is one of the example. So example you can think of distance. You can add an example that is speed. Furthermore we can write energy, work, current and so on. Current you may be thinking of it as having a direction but okay don't worry it's still it is a scalar quantity because it is not obeying the vector law of addition. So speed, energy, electric current and so on. All these quantities are scalar quantities. Now let's come to vectors. What are what physical quantities are defined as vectors or classified into vectors? Now I told you some physical quantities cannot be only described with only magnitude. To completely describe them, we require a direction. For example, as you move from your home to school, there would be the minimum shortest path, a straight line path connecting from your home to school. When you move along that path, you will be saying that the displacement from your home to school is somewhere around let's say 2 kilometers and you have to specify the direction it is towards east from your home to school. So vector quantities are such quantities which have both magnitude and direction. They have both magnitude and direction. And direction and one more part you can add it obeys it obeys the vector law of addition it obeys vector law of addition vector law of addition we'll talk more about all this thing and need not to worry we'll talk all about this thing now tensors there are some quantities which have magnitude but it will be very difficult for you all to give its direction such quantities are tensors i will give you an example like say moment of inertia Okay, because something which only will have the value, but you cannot physically imagine it. You cannot, you cannot show that it is having some physical significance. Such quantities are tensors. Now, today our main aspect of the class is, that is to understand vectors. Let's see some basic things that we should know in vectors. So, some basic details or some basic points that we should know about vectors. Now, to represent a quantity, we are used to represent a vector quantity we will use an arrow line so see how it is represented it is represented as representation is done as with a straight line and with an arrow now see this part this part is known as head of the vector this part is known as head and the part from point from where it is initiating that is known as tail now one more thing the length the length of this arrow will give you an idea about the magnitude of the vector quantity so length is proportional to the magnitude length is proportional to magnitude of the vector quantity one more thing you should have the idea that means if you draw a more 
longer arrow that means the value that you're denoting that is having a more magnitude if you draw a very less magnitude a very shorter arrow that means the magnitude will be very smaller so length will be proportional to magnitude this is head this is tail this simple representation of vector now generally vector quantities will be representing by using some capital letter and we will be marking an arrow over its head so this such is the representation the way, the way we are going to represent a vector quantity that is by a and when we are going to measure or uh, mark an arrow over here then this is called the representation of vector a so this was all about the representation part let's come wow how many types of vectors are there let's come to the point the first one is <coughs> let's say let's talk about equal vectors now two or any number of vectors can be said to be equal vectors if both are having the same magnitude and same direction so two vectors a vector and b vector are said to be equal if they have same magnitude and they are directed along the same direction are said to be equal if they have same magnitude and they are directed along the same direction and they are along same direction so such are such a such two vectors are equal vectors so this is all about equal vectors now one thing if you displace a vector parallel to itself the vector will not change what i mean to say displacing or shifting parallel displacing parallel to itself there are some basic points that you should know suppose we have a vector whose direction is given in this way let's say this is vector b okay now what you're going to do i'm going to displace it parallel to itself so what i will make i will be drawing the next after displacing it this arrow line now if i displace the vector parallel to itself there will be no change in vector the vector will still remain the same it will be vector b only so if you displace a vector parallel to itself there will be no change in the vector quantity let's come to the come here so you'd be having the idea of what is a scalar what are vectors vectors i have not written the example those are velocity force momentum all these are examples of vector quantities when uh, further when we understand better uh, vectors in a better way we'll be adding more examples you'll see that even electric field magnetic field those are also vector quantities now next thing we got this equal vectors we got this on vector displacing parallel to itself after studying this basic part let's come to one more part that is zero vector now zero vector is nothing zero vector is nothing but a vector whose magnitude is zero and whose direction is not defined a vector of magnitude zero a vector of magnitude zero and whose direction is not defined of magnitude zero and whose direction is not defined whose direction is undefined such a vector is zero vector how you are going to say a zero vector let's say a vector value comes out to be zero so keep it zero and just make a dot this will be representation of a zero vector so need not to worry uh, it will be somewhat only a, a dot and it has got no physical significance it has got no magnitude next one is parallel vector now see parallel vector is what if two vectors are along the same sense along the same direction two or multiple including one two three four any number of vectors all should be directed along the same sense a vector now we have got let's say b vector okay we are not considered about the we are not concerned about the magnitude let's say we have the vector c all these three vectors are parallel vectors okay they should have the same sense let's come to the anti parallel vectors anti parallel or you can think about opposite vectors so such vectors which are directed along two opposite directions such two vectors are known as anti parallel example let's say this is vector a and if we have vector b in this way so such two vectors are anti parallel vectors that is they are acting along the opposite direction now next comes negative of a vector 
how to take negative of a vector. After having all the ideas of basics of the vectors, let's understand the negative of a vector. Negative of a vector. Now see, suppose you mark a vector A, you, vector, you mark a vector A in this direction, okay? And you want to denote minus of A vector, need not to worry about how it is, just draw from here tail, just draw a line acting on the same line but it should be opposite in sense this will be minus a vector one more example let's say this is vector b so just draw a vector opposite to it so this vector will be minus b vector so and negative of a vector is nothing but you have to draw the vector of same magnitude but acting in the opposite direction that is the negative of a vector these are some basic points that you should know in the vector part let's come to here we have done zero vector we have done parallel anti parallel vectors now the main part how vectors are added suppose i tell you you travel a distance of 5 km and let's say your friend has traveled a distance of 8 km so if i ask you what is the total distance traveled by you and your friend you will simply add 5 and 8 and you will say the total distance is 5 plus 8 that is 13 now suppose suppose if I take displacement let's say you started from a point you went to the temp you let's say you started from your home you went to a temple you went to your school and later on you stayed in your school so if I say what is your displacement from your home to school see suppose this is your home this is your home and let's say this is the temple okay you first you went to the temple now further you went to school which is lying somewhere here now let's say <coughs> this distance let's say it is 12 and let's say this distance is 5 kilometers this is 12 kilometers this is 5 kilometer now if i ask you what is your displacement from your home to school your displacement will be not 12 plus 5 that is your distance that you have traveled your displacement will be only this much and if you use the triangle rule, you will get this as 12 plus 5 that and under root take 12 square plus 5 square, take this under root, you will get 13. 13 is the displacement that is the actual displacement from your home to school while you moved, while moving, while, while visiting first to temple and then you went to school. So 13 will be your displacement. Now that means vector quantities cannot be added with the use of simple algebra. There's a different algebra for addition, for ad adding vectors. Now we are going to learn a method how to add two vectors. It's very simple. See here. Let us say two vectors are present. So first we are going to study about addition of vectors. You know the basics of vectors. So addition of vectors, let's add, let's try to understand. Let's say I have vector A in this way and let's say vector B in this way. It is randomly oriented to be more, uh, now we have to add them. We don't have any idea how they, how they should be added. So what you do to have the basic idea, you should draw the vector in this way. Let's say this is vector A and the second vector should be drawn in this way that is you join the tip of both the vector at one point you join the tip of both the vector at one point now you can check the angle that is existing between the two vectors remember the angle between the vector should be always less than 180 degree it cannot be more than 180 degree remember one more point you can take a caution and note it angle between vectors is always less than or maximum it can be equal to 180 degree it should be less than or equal to 180 degree or in terms of radian pi radian how we are going to add these two vectors now our target is this how to add them we know their direction we know with what angle they are separated so what we do first method we will learn triangular law of addition of vectors so first we will learn triangular law that is a basic way to find out the addition of two vectors let's say one vector is directed in this way this is vector a and the other vector is directed in this way this is vector b 
and the angle between the two is let's say is theta. So what do you do? First of all, you shift vector B parallel to itself such that its tail will join the head of vector A. So on shifting, we'll be obtaining somewhat the diagram in this way. And I told you on shifting, it will not make any change. We'll get this as vector B. Now what you do, if I go from vector A to vector B in this sense, and if I try to complete the triangle, the triangle will be completed in this way. Now just change the sense in which we in which we were moving. This is the sense of our motion. We moved in this way. Just change the sense. Now mark this direction as resultant vector. So R vector will be equal to A vector plus V vector. So remember what you have to do. You have to you have to complete the triangle. Now we got the direction of R. R let's say it makes an angle alpha with A. Now see how mathematics will help us in knowing the magnitude of R and when we know the magnitude of A and B and we know the angle between A and B. What do you do? You draw a line, draw perpendicular from this point head of vector B such that it meets vector A extended somewhere at this point. Let's call this point as P. Okay. Now you can see I told you the length will be proportional to the magnitude of vector. Let's say its magnitude is small b and let's say its magnitude is small a. Now this will be angle theta because we have displaced it parallel to itself. This will be angle theta. Now if you check, if I call this value as y, you check, you check this will come out to be b sine theta and if I call this value as x, this much value was y, if I call this value as x, you can check it will come out to be b cos theta. Simple trigonometry, I've, also, I've already told you about sine theta, cos theta, how it is evaluated since this angle is 90 degree. We can easily write this length as b sine theta and this length as b cos theta. That will be of no difficulty to you all in doing it. Now see this, this is a right angle triangle, you can see. It's a right angle triangle. Very easily you can find out the magnitude of this length in terms of magnitude of this length and this length and this length. We know from Pythagoras theorem, I'm not marking the sides that's a very easy thing from Pythagoras theorem. We know that the sum of hypotenuse, sorry, the square of hypotenuse is equal to sum of the square of the rest two sides. So let's say the magnitude of the resultant is equal to small r. So we can write small r whole square is equal to this length plus this length, that is a plus b cos theta whole square a plus b cos theta whole square and plus square of this length that is b sin theta whole square b sin theta whole square now find it find the value of this right hand side term a square plus b square cos square theta plus 2ab cos theta plus b square sin square theta See what you're going to obtain a square and see plus b square cos square theta plus b square sin square theta we can take b square common you can write this as a square take common b square cos square theta plus sin square theta this value will be 1 I have already given you plus 2ab cos theta we got this now this value is equal to 1 so we can write a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta. This is the value of r square. Now the value of r, you can write it very simple. This will be equal to under root of a square plus b 